What's going on folks? This is Jagos and we're going to be talking about Valve today. Now, Valve hasn't really done anything much, but Bloomberg decided to sit here and run an attack piece that goes against Valve. Now, for full disclosure, I like Valve, but the fact is I'm not afraid to give them criticism when need be. Also, the Bloomberg is an attack piece because they have shown that they are very, very discriminatory against gamers while ignoring the very same things that they're doing in regards to other online issues that are very fairly similar to what is going on with Valve today. Now, with the Valve industry, and all of this is going to be at the bottom, the very fact of the matter is they want to sit here and complain about Valve making $1.2 billion in on some type of online gambling. It's very vague. This, the details are very, very spurious, but the, what they're trying to basically say is that Valve, let's just be very, very quick about it, a 500 employee organization that's mostly creating a platform is supposed to sit here and regulate the online gambling for all of its sites, which is very fairly impossible. There's not enough people that can do it. But what they do is they create an online platform, particularly with some of their games, such as Counter-Strike Go, which is one of their most recent ones. Now, let me go into what Counter-Strike or Counter-Strike Go is, or Online Strike, whatever one you, Global Offensive. That's exactly what it is. Counter-Strike is about five-on-five -five tactical first-person shooter, and what I mean by that is you have you are one of the you are part of a team that goes for five you know for 16 rounds and what you're trying to do is go from the be there's a beginning round with the pistols there's a middle round with like submachine guns and then a full round with like the high heavy grade weaponry how you play and the tactics that you utilize are very not necessarily simplistic they can be very very complex but you're facing off against another team that eventually has pretty much a type of football scrum type feel to it. The matches can last about 30, 45 minutes. I recently had on my Twitter channel uh, um, a lot of people that were going to one of our first ones and we had just five people. So it, was, it took from 12 o'clock to about two o'clock that morning to finish with five people playing tournaments on 20 machines it was not five people but five teams of five that were playing on 20 machines and you can see that this can be a very difficult thing to do when the teams are on when the game can last for up to an hour especially if people are very very evenly matched but it is what it is. You have to play three rounds, 16 people. That's what CSGO is. And for the time being, is you can have insider trading at the higher levels, which is something that most e -publish, or most publishers have to sit here and deal with, as well as other types of um, incentives that sit here and mark down the game. Now, this isn't necessarily just about CSGO, but you can see that people will sit here and begin to gamble especially on games they do it in fantasy football they do it in other other types of entertainments all over the place I pretty much if I had to be honest there is a gamble on everything that you have to do and I have put that into one of my rules that capitalism is a gamble but people don't really recognize that so what am I sitting here and talking about CS in regards to CSGO what Bloomberg has said here on this specific two articles that I'm going to be linking from Bloomberg, the first one is a report on how much they're making and it's $2.3 billion in online bets. This is coming from Joshua Brustein and Eben Novi Williams. What they basically try to do is sit here and say that Valve is responsible for creating a platform where gaming can coexist with other part aspects of online entertainments. This is coming from April 20th, 2016. I'll have it down at the underbar, but 
a newer one by Joshua Brustein says that the company's failure to crack down on sites allows it to be used as virtual currency, which is pretty, it can be part of legal aspects, but here's the problem. This is 1.2 or 2.3 billion dollars. Okay, I, I get that. But when you look at other industries and where our money actually goes, this seems like drops in the bucket for a number of reasons. I looked at the most comparable thing to the gaming gaming gambling that is going on. Now, instead of esports, there's also real sports. And I had to look into fantasy football as just one aspect. And what did I find out? But the f very fact is that $18 billion goes in, has been going into it. It's an $18 billion industry for just fantasy football. Now, what they did was they sat here and talked about gamers in a very negative light. They were talking about it's mostly online males, which, okay, that's fairly true. Mostly males are going to be gambling because they were the ones hardest hit by economics. But we're not going to get into the economics just yet. What we're doing is we're going to go into this dailyinfographic.com, which is talking about fantasy football as an $18 billion industry. You have, for America, since I'm an American, males 20%, females are 5%, adults are 18%, and teens are 30%. So that was talking about fantasy football. Now, if you go back into the articles that I had, they were talking about it's mostly males, but they didn't have the statist statistical breakdown of who was in and gambling the most on Valve and Steam. Now this is pretty much a preliminary report and most of the people that they were looking for declined. Valve didn't give them an answer and of course they're probably not because they're busy working on virtual reality and a few other things that they want to work on and not taking public research requests. Then you have all of the people that they basically sat here and more or less tried to make up a lot of arguments that if you look at them and break them down it's like what do you want Valve to do except to try to break down these sites instead of trying to legalize them in any way shape or form now I have an article from Dave Zirin that talks about insider trading hits the sports world and this one you can actually compare and contrast what you know of Valve with what you know of the NFL, NBA, and other part aspects where they have to deal with these same issues of the $400 billion sports gambling industry. Now, to be fair, this is $400 billion that's in the NBA, NFL, and a lot of other things. For me to go down and break it all down right now, that would take way too much time. I'd have to sit here and go into how the NFL used to be run by the mafia and how that has affected the fact that they want most of the NFL games to be in large arenas and larger arenas and that's something that I don't really want to do right now but I'll show the Bill Moyer show where Dave Zirin is a guest and you all can do that on your own time but the basic gist of it here is that with these three industries baseball basketball and football you have a larger area that from the looks of it, Bloomberg, when they had to sit here and talk about it themselves, they were talking about, you aren't good enough to make win money playing daily fantasy football. And this is an article from 2015 from Joshua Brustein. So, Joshua Brustein, who has a negative view of the gaming industry, also sits here and says, the online gambling of fantasy football is you aren't good enough so if people are good enough to make money in counter-strike with smaller ticketed items why can't he sit here and put that similar view into the fantasy football it doesn't make sense but let's see where else our money goes just think about how much money is being passed around in the sports industry and how much is being passed around in the gaming industry the gaming industry has 2.3 billion. 
billion. So we have 400 billion in the sports sports industry. Okay, what would it take to sit here and stop people from gambling? Give them better jobs, give them something to sit here and strive for, give them a lot of other things. Where is that money going? Well, let's take Detroit. One of the things about Detroit is in order to save Detroit, the city, it would have been $18 billion. What happened with that money? It went to a bank and it went to the corporate industry. It went to the GMO or uh, to the car companies and it went to their banks at the tune of $50 billion in the TARP bank bailout instead of going to the people that needed it most. Now there's they're starting to recover and their recovery has been hampered by things like Flint but this is just to give you a comparison who should be targeted for all of this gambling where all these illicit funds are going now if you look at the Dave Zirin article it'll talk about how these people are skipping regulations skipping all these taxes and all this other stuff but to me it looks like Joshua Brustein has one of two different ways to view this thing. If you're not good enough to make money on fantasy football, why in the world are you gonna sit here and vilify, vilify the gaming industry for trying to sit here and make a buck in this way, shape, or form? Now, let's be honest. This isn't just in the gaming industry. The fighting game community has had a lot of gamblers for a lot of different reasons. I mean, you have money matches all over the place. But because it's so small, not a lot of people are going to be focusing on that, whereas they focus a lot more on Valve because it's one big company and CSGO has gotten to be a quote-unquote eSport. Other eSports are going to have to sit here and deal with this gambling issue because people are going to that. They're trying to sit here and make money. They're going to be starting to gamble. They're going to have to deal with insider trading. All of these are the lack of governmental regulations, governmental oversight in some way, shape, or form because the money is going to instead go to publishers and it's going to go to the players as well as these third mafia types that are going to be gambling a lot more. And I could go into this a lot more, but unless you really want to sit here and hear something like that, especially in football, I'm not going to get into it right now. So that's my main view that's my main point here this is something that seems like they want to sit here and vilify the gaming industry instead of looking at a bigger industry that has a lot more problems without a lot of regulations and then sit here and say what they think should work best for this gambling issue when they're not really looking at it from a you know bottom-up perspective